Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Uh, made it through another week. This crazy market. <laughs> so the trading at Globex so far has been pretty, pretty standard. Now, kind of walk you through what happened at the end of the day yesterday. It was, you know, we drove way, way up over 4,400 you know, hit that 07 area and then liquidated down. Now, see Derek, Derek was saying that he's having some trouble and and that, that, you know, that makes sense because when you come into this, a lot of traders are taught to trade off of technical analysis and, and that's all good and everything like that, but they don't know why the price is moving. So it's pretty hard to know whether to go long or short if you don't know what's going on. And that's what I really, really want to try and teach. Now, in Globex, here's the open of Globex, which is right where we closed yesterday. We opened and drove up, and that was basically a stop run because if you look at this O period went down here to 43.80, the size traders had to buy the market and they'd be positioned long here. So when the market opens, they blow off that position right? They, they cash up, right? A little bit, right? Then the market falls, right? It kind of chops around in a tight range between 78 and 82, drive up again to cash out. When markets drive up and then come back in, these are what we call stop runs. They happen so the people who buy, right? Now, yesterday, somebody said for every buyer, there's a seller and all this nonsense. But what happens is when you sell or buy a contract, there is someone who takes the other side of that trade, and that is a wholesale market maker 90% of the time. Now, the CME does match orders and things like that, but there are market makers who provide liquidity, and their job is to buy when nobody else buys and sell when nobody else does. So if they buy when nobody else buys, how do they get rid of that product, right? You got to think if you're buying all the time, you got to be constantly selling too, right? Otherwise, you're just buying and buying and buying and bankrupt, right? So what they do is they accumulate size and then they move the market higher by taking the upper stops. That creates liquidity, right? Because none of you guys have ever created liquidity. It's kind of hard to imagine why this happens. Sometimes there is no buying in a market. You got to create the buying. That's why I always say as a trader, we need to focus on supply. Don't worry about the demand. We'll take care of that on the other side, okay? We'll create the demand. You just make sure when we create demand and you're long, you sell into it, okay? So what happened was the market did this stop run and then as soon as you take an upper stop and there's no continuation, you should automatically be as a trader thinking, let's look at the lower stops. So when W took these lower stops, the people who were long in this area puked out and sold here. Now you'll see that the overnight low was one or two ticks above the low from two days ago, the T plus two low. So what happened is because the market, again, shorts got trapped yesterday, right? Because C and D pushed down and then we had this rally at the end of the day and the shorts were trapped above 4377 because that's where the time and volume profiles are so the market sold off the shorts came in and started to cover right the shorts are always the first people to buy when a market drops does anybody can anybody tell me why anybody awake anybody tell me why the shorts are always the first to cover first to buy Exactly. They have no risk. They're closing a trade and they're taking profits. So they start to take profits and close their trade. As supply starts to dry up, the shorts end up holding the price and stabilizing it. So the large position traders will say, oh, the shorts are covering. Let me step ahead and they'll start competing with the shorts for product. And it'll go back and forth in this range in a choppy motion, right? 
And then once that all of the selling supply is exhausted and sucked up like a paper towel sucks up water, they move the market higher to sell that supply. And I outline this step by step. If you scroll back, it's also in the JJ written analysis section. I highly suggest a lot of you people look at that because it tells you exactly what happens and why it happens. Right. So as the market gets taken up to sell product, you take the stops here, here, here and there and you blow off what you bought into the people who pray, chase price. Right. If everyone starts buying, well, it's <laughs> they don't keep it down, Derek. There's supply. See, because you see this here. Let me let me kind of show you how, how this works. Do you see this time and volume spent here, right? You see this? That pukes down. That's the supply that sells. The supply keeps the price down. What these traders do is they just sit there and let it fall into their laps. They don't chase it like you and I do, right? Or how retail traders. It's called buying on the bid. They just sit here and they bid the market and they soak it all up. Then once the supply is all soaked up, then the price goes up. Does that make sense? It's just supply and demand. There's no outside selling. So the only selling comes from the people who are trapped here. Does that make sense? So say you were long at 43.82 and the market goes down to 43.77, right? The, the, yeah, don't use that word, passive buyers. There's no such thing as a passive buyer, right? That, that's, it's a wholesale buyer, okay? There's a lot of stuff that's written about there, passive buyers and all that. That's all, that, that's not really quite accurate, okay? Right? There's a reason why they're buying it here. Okay, you ever been to a convenience store, right? Like you, you go to like a 7-Eleven or a convenience store, right? And they're selling you a, a soft drink for two bucks. Now, did they pay two bucks for that soft drink? So they bought it cheaper, right? Because the goal is to sell it at a profit, right? To stay in business. Does that make sense? There's nothing passive about that. It's a market. That's why they don't call it the stock hot tub. It's the stock market, the futures market, because it's a market, right? And the goal of a market is to buy some cheap crap, mark it up and sell it to you, right? So here we're buying the cheap crap, right? Because people are selling it, right? Just like a used car lot, right? They sell the car at a higher price. They buy it back cheaper. Then they go and sell it up higher. Does that make sense? It's just commerce. Right. The, the, and the, the thing is, there's so much BS written on Twitter and all these trading rooms about passive buyers and unfinished business and all this just total bullcrap. Right. That it confuses people. Right. So the sellers who is the people who are trapped long here sell down to the to the cup to the to the shorts we're covering, right? The shorts stabilize the price, which means if there's 10,000 contracts for sale trapped long and they sell those 10,000 contracts, the shorts cover, they maybe buy five, then wholesale buys the other five. And that's it, no more selling, finished business. Now, so the wholesalers take the market up by just stopping they just sell at higher prices, and that's how the market goes higher, right? Because buyers realize that the selling has stopped and they jump in, right? So the market runs the stops. This creates the liquidity to sell all of this position up here. And then what they do is once buyers get tired of buying it up here, they sell the market down into where their cost basis is, just like they did in I. Right? The A and B stop runs, right? 
Yeah, because as soon as you got to B, you, there was a seller at 77, right? Exactly. So they got to take the market down. They drop their bids, and those sellers will follow, right? And then once all that overhanging supply is taken out of the market, the market just rips. Because what, you know, the first A and B stop run, nice call nonstop, right? That stop run cleans out those sellers that were sitting here. You make them sell to you down here, right? It's like, you know, holding somebody upside down and shaking all the money out of their pockets, right? You got to get, you got to get everything out. Then you take it up and now it's all yours to sell, right? It's your market now right? You're not competing with anybody to sell. So zip. Then you sell the market down to your cost basis, right? Just like Walmart's got toasters on sale for 50 bucks. Nobody's buying them at 50. So they, they'll sell them at 40, right? Then they'll sell them at 30. Their cost basis is five. So they can sell the thing all the way down. Then they just stop selling at 77 half. That's why my levels work. Catch a bid and then back up. Right. Once you find some buyers. Right. It's just just think about selling a product. Right. Take all of that complicated crap out of your heads and think about selling a product. If you had to sell five container loads. Right. Of. Cell phone chargers. Right. You got to advertise that you've got them for sale. Right, you put them up at a price. If people keep buying, you can creep the prices up. If people stop buying, you creep the prices down to find the buyers, find the bids. Right, does that make sense? So, now what do we got? We've cleaned the market up. Right, on candles, you can see them sell it down to VWAP, go back under, and then back up. Right, so. Once the market comes back under VWAP, right? That's where you take the responsive long. This is the run up to sell inventory. Inventory gets trapped long, sells off. This is the counter inventory trade. And then you can see it on candles and on the wax. Right? Does that make sense to you guys? So now what are we looking for, right? So now we flush this thing, right? Now we're coming up to 88. And let's see how much of a seller we have at 88. Now, here's where it gets interesting, right? Because really the higher, the highest stop is up here. Hey, Bonesy, how's it, right? The highest stop is up here. So when the market gets up to that highest stop, Right? Does it have the order flow? Because these guys can't do anything. The size traders, the wholesalers, the big prop traders, they use the order flow that comes in to the market to help leverage their agenda, which means right? they use that as leverage. So if a bunch of buying comes in and I've got an account that's long a bunch of crap, I'm going to use that buying to sell my long position into. Right. If a bunch of selling comes in, I'm going to have an account that's short and I'm going to use that selling to cover my short. Right. Because these wholesalers and size traders, they're, they're not just like us. They, they don't just have one account. They have multiple accounts. Right. That, you know, and that's how they make money. Right. By providing that liquidity. So now what we need to look at is do we get over 88 or do we find a seller at 88, right? Sorry, I went through that whole long thing, but I wanted to, to talk about what I've written up this morning before our session so people can get an understanding and a sense of why markets move. Because if you understand why they move and you understand what the business practice is, you're going to make a lot less trading misjudgments Right, that keeps us from shorting at the lows and it keeps us from buying the highs. Right, because a lot of people are taught to buy breakouts. Right, but those are 
those are false breakouts, right? What you guys call a false breakout in the business is known as a stop run. Right? So see how there's a little bit of a seller at 88? Anybody want to guess who the seller is at 88? Anyone to get anybody want to guess who's selling 88? Yeah, exactly, nonstop. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Right? Exactly. Now you guys are cooking with gas. Beautiful. Nice work. So now as retail traders, what the hell do we do, JJ? Oh yeah, Derek. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's, they they filled them and drilled them, baby. <laughs> that's called filling and drilling, much like a dentist, right? <laughs> exactly. Now, now you're seeing it. Now you're seeing it, right? These guys were positioned long in the J and K back and forth. That scrubbing motion, like Granny on the washboard. And up here about 4,400, look at the, the point of controls up here, right? You nailed it, Derek, right there. See all that volume? And then they just hammered the market down in M&M &M to get rid of their inventory that they bought here, right? Exactly. They need to stock up again, right? Just like you have a convenience store and you sell out of cigarettes. You got to go to wherever the hell you buy cigarettes at wholesale to go buy them back. Bingo. Now you got it. Now you got it. Beautiful. Yeah, it's just a market. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise, right? You know, the one thing I've seen about trading education and people on Twitter with all their fancy talk is, you know, there's a saying where I come from. If you can't dazzle them with your brilliance, baffle them with your bullshit, right? And there's a lot of that going on out there. That's why I like to keep it simple, right? So people can understand what's going on. Because you know what? This this has only been going on for 300 years. It's the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> right? It's just the same thing, right? It's like the world's biggest used car lot, right? Oh, yeah, I'll sell them to you at 88. No problem. Don't worry about it. You know, yeah, it's a great price. Yeah, you should buy more. Buy all you can. And then when the market dips down, right, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, my friend. I can't, I can't pay 88. I know you bought it at 88, but my boss will beat me if I, if I buy it at 88. I can, I can maybe give you 83 for it. I'm so sorry. See? Right? All the while, they're just selling and selling and selling. Right? And markets are, see, markets are created, right? So I always give people an assignment, and I used to do this all the time. I give you 100 million shares of stock. The stock, stock trades at 10 cents, but it only trades 10,000 shares a day. What are you going to do? Right? Your cost basis on that 100 million shares is 0 0.001 cent, okay? And it's trading at 10 cents, but it only trades 10,000 shares a day. It's the same cycle in higher time frames, Pello, because right now we don't have a lot of investment money coming into this market, right? We might now that it's stabilized, we'll see, right? I just look, at, my view app is anchored at the Globex Open, right? Now there are people in this room who look at yearly VWAP, monthly VWAP, Buffalo Chicken VWAP, Cool Ranch VWAP, Kentucky Fried. They've got tens of thousands of VWAPs. You can do all sorts of stuff with that. I like a simple life, right? Because I'm a day trader. Right, so my VWAP anchors at the Globex Open, and that's it. 
right? When you're a new trader, the most important thing you do is focus. The way to focus is not to look at 300 different things, right? The way to focus is focus on structure and inventory and one VWAP, right? What happens in trading rooms is somebody finds something really cool and they go, hey, 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 look at this. And then everybody goes and looks at that and ignores everything they've learned and then they blow up their accounts and then they go, what the hell happened? It's because you weren't focusing, right? Focus, focus, focus. I know sometimes it's insanely boring and you want to look at 30 different things and correlate markets, you know, and look how, you know, absolute zero and pi and, you know, uh, cold fusion and all of that stuff interrelate to the NASDAQ and, and all, you know, but it's not going to make you any money, right? Just watch the little red bouncing ball or the little red bouncing triangle and look at inventory, right? So we tickled 88. There's still a seller there, right? Keep it simple, man. Remember, until, until the 90s, for hundreds of years, trading was done with a golf pencil and a pad of paper. So how did these people, how the hell did these people make money? for hundreds of years before all this crap came along. Think about it. What they did was they looked at levels and they knew that if a market traded for like three weeks, like say a market is like a, is a $10 stock and the market's trading for three weeks between 10 and 12 and it can't crack 12 to the upside and it breaks 10. Well, then it's a short because you got people trapped from 10 to 12 who are going to sell out. And you know before that there were bids at six. So you short 10 to six, right? So you short maybe nine and a half and you cover six or seven. See? So now we're waiting. <clears throat> we got five minutes before the London Open, right? So we've gone, we went up, we came down, we went back up, we're coming back down. Now let's see if we hold that 84 area, right? Into London, right? Because what usually happens in London, a situation like this, is London will come in and they'll start, the market will sell down before London. And then the market, London will come and bid the market up. But it all depends on inventory, and we have to watch that order flow. So let's watch and see what happens now. Does that make sense? Okay, guys. Let me know if something needs to be explained in different ways, right? I'm happy to explain it. Now, tomorrow at 9 o'clock Eastern time, I'm doing a Q&A, Profile 101, right? So anyone who's around, please come, because I used to do these at night. But now, because I'm six hours ahead of you guys, you know, it's it's a little harder to do them at night. So I'm going to start doing them on Saturdays when my girlfriend works. So, you know, and we'll record them. So, you've, you know, exactly. Hey, Leto, haven't seen you in a while. Thank you, brother. Yeah, the VPOC is just the most volume, right? Right. So the traditional profile people say the value area is 70% of the volume. The VPOC is where 70% of the value area is, right? I look at it like the position, right? Globex has nice price action, Matt. I would rather trade Globex than RTH 
right? Because you know the agenda. The agenda is just push an inventory, right? So you just trade with inventory, you're done, and then you can chill out. And if you see some good trades, and what that does is if you make some money before the market opens, what that does is that takes that, that financial pressure off your psyche where you're pushing yourself to take trades and you're getting stopped out, right? Because it's very hard to trade if you need the money. The best traders I've ever seen trade like they don't have a care in the world, right? They have this sort of like flow, right? There was this old dude. There was a brokerage firm called Dominic and Dominic in Vancouver. And there was this old, the old guy who owned it. His name was Bruce McDonald. May he rest in peace. And Bruce was an alcoholic and he would trade when you, he was drunk to the gills. This guy would trade, you know, it would be like watching Michael Jordan play basketball. Dude was half cut and he would just be in and out and millions of shares here, millions of shares there, just boom, 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 boom. End of the day, he's got 5 million bucks in the account. Thanks. Bye. I'm off to the bar. Right. And he was just, he was just loose, right? So, you know, <laughs> he rides the bus home. Well, I don't think he, I don't think he, somebody poured him into a cab at the end of the day. But the, the thing is, right, you know, you, you care about your risk, right? You have to. But if you have financial burden on you when you're trading, it really messes things up. So what I like to do, I love this Globex because I make a few shekels and then I'm not like so edgy when that RTH bell opens. Like if you'll notice a lot of trading rooms are like, they're like, uh, they're like a Peloton thing, right? Where the instructor is yelling at everybody, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And, and nobody's making money in those things, right? Because they're all amped up right? They can't properly see the market because you got to be relaxed to do this, right? Now, here we go. Good morning, London. Let's see what we got. Now, if we have some juice, we'll go take out that K high. So that that's our focus on the upside. Our focus on the downside is that M low. So, N period just took M by just a couple of ticks, three. Now it's going to go down and try and find the bid. So if you're trading this, right, and say you're short 88, right, you're looking for responsive buying at 86. There's a tiny bit of a position here that they sold up here. Let's see if they sell it down to that 86 position. Hey, Mark. Well, losing gives you lessons, Paolo, if you understand why you lost. Right? If you don't understand why you lost, then, then there's no lesson. It's just like gambling. Right? If if you are if if you're you know if you're methodical and you write down, like yesterday, I took some trades and I was trading too early and I found myself trying to force things. So I, I got stopped out a couple of times. Then I went back in, made that back and just kind of flattened out and got up a couple of, I was up like three points. Then I went for a walk for an hour, right? And I just blew my head out and went for a walk for an hour, came back, sat down, I was in the flow again, right? Make use of that 23, three hour trading cycle. Don't just sit there for hours and hours. If you are sitting there for hours and hours, don't trade, watch and write down what's going on in your trading journal, right? So N, right? Now they're gonna sell this market down and let's see, remember we said if you're short 88, you should be looking at 86. Right, and now 84, let's see, we can go down and tickle 84. 
Let's see how much buying there is at the close of yesterday. Watch. See? See how it got down to the close and stopped one tick before? So there's a few buy orders in there, but they're not that aggressive. Because if they were aggressive buy orders at the close, it would bounce higher. But see how they're filling those buy orders? So there's a little bit of supply that's coming in and filling those orders. Now, if we break 84, we'll be looking for 82, right? So you can use the levels on this one minute candle chart to take some decent trades because what these candles do is they tell you what the short term inventory corrections are, right? So now you know that the inventory is long over 84. So a break of 84 will take us to 82 because here we couldn't get down to 82 other than that flush and up. So if we can't get down to 82, just give this a little bit of time and watch and see whether we can, right? Because if you short here, you have to wait till you have to, you'll have to take the market down to that M low and blow out those stops to get a decent cover, right? So what I'm looking for is, right, I missed the short. I should have been short 88, 87, right? So I missed that. That's okay. So now we're looking for a responsive long as the market liquidates. But we got to let it liquidate, and let's see where the shorts come into cover, right? Because if we can't get down to 82 like here, right, that means we'll creep 84, and we could look to go long 84 to 86, 87. Does that make sense? That's how we look at taking trades, right? Um, who's asking? Who's asking? Who's asking? Derek, Derek, right? You don't know whether to go long or short. So this is what's telling you, right? This is supply over 84, right? As that supply leaks lower, you don't want to really short it until you know that that supply is going to break loose and the price action is a little slow. So just this is like an area where it's a little contentious. You want to see this group of candles, whether or not the subsequent one minute candles can take that out. Otherwise, the auction is going to be to the upside. See, there's 84, 84 half. Right? See, ah, shit, crap, I was going to buy 84, but that's okay. Let's see if we come back and back test it, right? Because you know there's inventory there, so we're going to creep 84, and we found sellers at 85, right? Now it's going to creep back down. See, I wanted to buy it. See, I was too quick, right? I didn't execute, but I was too quick. If I had bought 84, I'd be like, eh, crap, right? So you got to wait. You got to let them work this out, right? So already I know that I caught myself, right? Because if I bought 84, I wouldn't be happy right now. But I wanted to because I saw price go up and I was like, oh, I missed it. See, everybody does it, right? So you catch yourself, right? So now I just got to wait and see if it breaks 82. Because if it doesn't break 82 and it creeps 84, that's probably a better buy. But the price action is sporadic right now, so I got to let this work itself out. Because if it breaks 82, we're going to come back and tickle VWAP, right? Because all of the inventory is above 80. If it breaks 82, it puts 80 into jeopardy, right? So I got to let them work this out, and I'm not going to step into the middle of that until I see the price stabilize over a level that I'm looking at. Does that make sense? See, I, I'm the same way. I'm a human being. So I, I'll even get sucked in by price, right? Happens to everybody. It happens to everyone, right? And if you could catch yourself, like I hesitated and I thought I missed the trade, right? And the fact that I wanted to buy 84 on that, on that blip up means I'm too anxious to trade. So I got to chill.
right? Now let's see if we can, let's tag 82. And now what are we looking at, right? Remember I said, if the market couldn't take out the K low, right? We should be looking at that M low where the stops are, right? Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, nonstop. The hardest thing is determining when you have an information. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know what? The whole I think it comes down to not being scared to miss a trade. Right? I always trade too early. My biggest fault is always trading too early because I was taught, right? My very first client was a Swiss bank. Right. And this guy who ran the bank, who was the president of the bank, he didn't want to trade with me because I was a rookie. The only reason that bank opened an account with me is because my client, the penguin, had four hundred million dollars in that bank. And he told the banker, you're going to give your orders to JJ because he's my boy. Right. And the banker said, well, he doesn't know what he's doing. And the penguin said, that's OK. He's loyal. You can't teach loyalty. Right. See, now now we're starting to creep over 84. Right. So this guy would call me at three in the morning screaming at me. Right. And if you don't answer the phone on the first ring, you're fired. If you take 30 seconds, longer than 30 seconds to fill a trade, and this is phone trading, where you had to call market makers to put in trades, you're fired. If you miss a fill, you're fired. Right. So you learn to trade quick. And that's my flaw when I'm trading retail. I always want to be Johnny on the spot, right? So I'll trade too early, get stopped out, and then the trade will go in my favor. See how they're screwing around 84? Because they're selling inventory above 84, right? These one-minute candles are a beautiful way to see where inventory is on a short-term basis. People use candles. <laughs> Yeah, you got to trade like the like you know the dude abides, right? The dude abides, right? You know. See, it's still contentious. We can't creep eighty four. So, what happens in a market if you if there's a seller at eighty four? What do the big traders say? You know what? Every time we try and creep the market over 84, this. Sorry, I was going to swear. This MF is standing there, sitting there, hitting my bids. You know what? Offer ahead of him and push his head into the toilet until he sells to us at 82. Once we've taken that seller out, then we'll creep 84 and it'll go through 84 like a hot knife through butter. Right? <laughs> exactly right see look how we're they're just playing with that seller right now the algos are programmed to do this it's not like a bunch of market makers sitting on the phone smoking cigarettes like in the old days but the algos are doing in effect the same thing that i'm talking about the algos are programmed to step ahead of a seller step ahead Drive that seller into your bids at cheaper prices, right? Now let's see if we can stay over 84. And if we creep, we'll go up to 86, and there should be a seller at 86. We're holding 84. And if there's a seller, at, if there's still a seller, they'll drive it lower. They don't care.
see how it's taking time because the order flow is really, really slow, right? Everybody see that? Now we should go creep up to 86, right? See that? Could be too late. And you might miss the trade, Norman, and that's okay. Right? Right there, I bought 84 and three quarters and just blasted it out right now. Right? I went long here. And then I was my out was going to be if it broke 84. And I was watching. I was, and what I was doing it is I was watching the way it traded. I was watching the numbers turn. This is where profile can help. The candles tell you. Right. I even executed. I was I was a minute too early. Right. I bought 84 and three quarters. Or was it 84 half? And then I was like, ah, crap. I went in too early again. But when that candle just did a tiny look below 84, I stayed in the trade. And I was watching how the numbers were spinning and the numbers were spinning. If they start spinning 83, three quarters, 83 half, I'm out. Right. But if the numbers here start spinning over where I bought or close to where I bought, that's where you have to use kind of both the profile. So what a lot of what a lot of what I do when I'm trading is I just go like this and I move that chart here so I can watch. Right. And I'm watching the numbers turn because that's telling me where the buying's coming in. See, look, 87, right? We're trading 87. There's 87 quarter, printed quarter, back down, right? So this is not, this isn't beautiful order flow, Norman, right? This is, this is really, okay, let me be honest. This is crappy order flow, right? So it's a little harder to trade and you got to kind of be on it a little bit, right? But that's okay. That's okay, right? Because if you can master this, even if you just trade with one micro to get into that, when the order flow changes and becomes more you know, fluid, right, it becomes better, right, uh, you'll be ace in it. What is my 10 times multiplier? Oh, crap, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Let me take a look. I have no idea. What the hell is a 10 times multiplier? Uh, hang on. I don't know. I don't know. You know what? Uh, ask LC. It comes with practice, Norman. Right? And I always tra say if you can trade a crappy market, you'll be able to trade like a good one. Right? You know, at what time is it now, right? It's like three o'clock in the morning, New York time, or something like that, or four o'clock in the morning. So yeah, you know, the the order flow is not going to be that great, right? Because obviously the British dudes really don't feel like working today, so they're not really pumping in the order flow, <laughs> right? <laughs> Someone's a little lazy. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Raj, you better start throwing some hot coffee on that boiler room, man. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's... Um... It's options expiration, right? Bacon sandwich and tea. Oh my God. <laughs> Some weird food combinations over here. Okay. I digress. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any questions about that? So, See, the other thing is when you look at a like a minute candle chart and you see this choppiness and this choppiness, 
that tells you right away, ah, the order flow is really not that great, right? It's not really, it's not really pumping, right? Like Bonesy, if it's like, you know, it's, it's like when pipeline's flat, right, Bonesy? Where's Bonesy? Right? Right? You'll get my surfing references, right? <laughs> pipeline's a little flat this morning, my friend. Right? Uh, I can talk the surfer talk, but I'm not that great a surfer. Ugh. Yeah, so now we're just farting around. Now, what I think is going to happen is if we break 82, we're going to have some pissed off longs. And I would look to see if we can go and tickle VWAP. Yeah, see, Matt, you know, there was there was a guy. Has anybody ever heard of Louis Ranieri? Louis Ranieri? He invented the mortgage-backed security. That's Solomon Brothers in the 80s. He was like the trader's trader, right? And, he's a, and his, his traders, he ran the bond desk at Solomon Brothers in the 80s. And his traders would be like, do you like them, Louie? Do you like them? And they'd be talking about the price action. He'd be like, nah. You know, or, you know, and it, if he'd say he liked, you know, it, if he goes, yeah, I like them, then the traders would go in and start doing their business because he'd watch the price action. Right? So we're always, see, we are slaves to the price action because we don't create the order flow, right? That's, you know, we're, we're slaves to that price action. So there are some times as a trader, where you just don't want to play, right? You just don't want to put your money to work, but it's crappy. Does that make sense? Wait for a better set of waves, right? Remember, it's your money, right? I always tell people, be a price action snob. And, my, and, and the example I use is, like, say you got five grand in your pocket and you're going to go shopping. Would you rather go shopping in Beverly Hills where it's a nice, beautiful store and a really pretty assistant, you know, sales assistant comes up and they give you a nice cappuccino and they flirt with you and everything feels good, right? Or would you rather go shopping in a tough area of town, get rolled, then steal your money and you end up in a dumpster? right? Be a price action snob. It's your money. You worked hard for that money, right? Like guys like Matt, like guys like that, Matt, Matt F, that dude puts his life on the line every day for his job, right? 5k in Beverly Hills. Okay. Well, all right. I was being cheap best. Okay. Say a hundred K, right? You could buy a pair of shoes, right? So that money that, you know, <laughs> that money that, that you're making, you know, it comes the hard way. Don't let it go the easy way, right? Now, now you see we caught a bid down there at 82, right? Now let's see what happens. We couldn't take out that M stop. See? Very interesting. Yeah. That nobody wants to go out without AC or nobody wants to go without heat. Right. So now, do we have the juice to take this N high and drive it higher? Now that we flushed out inventory, flushed it out again, flushed it out again. Right. So that's basically what we're looking for. <laughs> that's why all traders should have a battery backup. Right? I don't have one here in London, but I, sh I should. 
Raj, how many times does the power go out here? Right? <clears throat> but I had it in Saskatchewan all the time. Give you another, it gave you your modem and your computer are, uh, are tied into it. Right? Get, go and get a battery backup. Because it'll give you 10, 20 minutes of time to close your positions out. Um, and always have the phone number of your trade desk programmed into your cell phone. So if anything happens, you can call the trade desk at where you're trading and have them cancel out your trade. Have your account number accessible, right? Have that, have that always on your desk, your account number the phone number to the trade desk, right? And what your position was, just in case. I know I'm a nervous Nelly, but man, I've seen everything. Does anybody have any questions? No, oh, you're in India, interesting. I haven't even been to India, my mom's from India. Oh, wow. Oh, well, guys, I think it's been a good session. I mean, the trades haven't been that great. But it's Friday, and it's options expiry. So remember, if it's options expiry, right? So what? Oh, here's the other thing, right? Fridays in this business are about protecting the money you made all week. The end of the month is about protecting the money you made all month. The end of the day is about protecting the money that you made that day. Remember that, right? So Fridays is not a day that you push it. Friday is a day where you put your arms around your account. And for those new traders, you should be wiring money out of your account every Friday, every second Friday. Take the cream off the top. Keep your account small and manageable so you don't get too big for your britches. Now, senior traders, you know, you don't, you know how to risk, you know, you, you have risk management, and I don't need to tell you that, what to do. But for newer traders, if you made money this week, take a little out, pay a bill or two. That'll make it real because there's no such thing as house money, okay? House money doesn't exist. All right? Good stuff, guys. Have a great night or morning. I will see you guys at RTH. And then remember, I'll be doing a session on Saturday morning at 9 Eastern time. Mahalo, Bonesy. Go have some loco moco for me, brother. <laughs> I'm still dieting. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Derek, if you need any help, just DM me. All the guys who are new to, tomorrow will we'll go through scenarios and stuff too. Nice work. Oh, nice. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm going to be on a diet for a while. I still got 40 pounds to lose. So it's a lifestyle change. No more Saskatchewan pizza. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Have a great morning, and I'll see you at RTH. Great questions today, guys. Keep them coming, right? And keep asking questions. The more you ask, the more questions you ask, it makes me a better teacher, too, right? So I appreciate that because I'm just learning how to teach. You know, it's only been a couple of years. <laughs> She's doing good. Thanks for asking. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you in a bit. Trade safe out there. Bye for now.